Coming up on this episode of The Village Idiom. Mosh pits. Did you have mosh pits at your concert? Like when I was performing? Uh-huh. No. <laughs> I mean, we didn't have the style of music. It did happen. The, 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 there were mosh pits once in a while, but it was like, what are you guys doing? Like, okay, we're so, an acapella boy band. <laughs> in, the, in the era of, of like jazz music mosh pit? Jazz music mosh pit. <laughs> a cluster funk. <laughs> dum, dum, da, da, village idiom. Hello and welcome to the Village Idiom. We are a podcast that every single week we choose a popular saying to take in admittedly shallow, hopefully comedic, once in a while interesting, if we're lucky, educational, dive, dive into its usage, its meaning, its origins, but mostly we just use it to hang our otherwise directionless conversation on. My name is Jurassic Mark. And I am Skinny. It's it's great to be here kicking off a, the year again. Yeah. More year kicking. <laughs> just kicking... 2023 right in the we're face. Here, we're here to do a little year kick egg. Kick 2023 right in the nads. <laughs> it's uh, more like once in a while comedic. Do you think it's always comedic oh, or once what, in a while did educational? I, say always, I said hopefully comedic. Hopefully. I don't think anything is very positive. Admittedly shallow. Hopefully comedic. <laughs> once in a while interesting if we're lucky educational. It's like a like some is sort of we can on, say on, with, online personality profile. Is there, <laughs> Is there anything we can say with confidence? Once like, in a while, interesting. One more thing. Definitely directionless. That's the only thing. The directionless is fine. Actually, I think we've gotten better. You think so? Well, wouldn't we, we think say that? To hang our otherwise, so otherwise directionless. We have direction because of the idiom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if it wasn't for that, it would just just be pure chaos. I wonder what it would be. That'd be pretty Oh, it's Mark and Mintz again. <laughs> pretty close. What'd you do this week? <laughs> There are podcasts speaking like that. Of, There's a lot of podcasts Speaking like that. of, okay, so 2023 and resolutions and these sorts of things. I know we're a couple weeks in now and we talked about what resolutions. Okay, so I'm on the I'm no phone, no phone January. Oh, for real. For real, no phone January. So I, I texted you today. <laughs> oh, did you? Was that today? I don't know. I didn't get it. Oh, but we use uh, Google Chat, so so you should be safe. Okay, so what ends up happening is, like, I, I've got, like, you know, business life to still, like, right. live and, exactly. and lead and all the rest of it. So <clears throat> need to have some some level of communication. So not to interrupt you here, but does your work not When you papers, say not to, but actually do it, yeah. does that, what does no, that mean? Not to interrupt you, but. But. I'm, I'm going to interrupt you. <laughs> But, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you finish. Okay, don't don't throw me under the bus right now. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say, doesn't work pay for your phone or no? Oh yes, uh, work pays for the phone, and I still get phone calls, just not in the time that you think I'm getting them. <laughs> so if you call, if you call me right now, yeah, m- my watch will notify me that I have been called. Oh, I see. And so then I can go. So you can oh, call back. Mark tried to get, and then I'll go. Mark, do you have a phone here that I could use? <laughs> Okay, got and then it. I'll call back. So at work, you have a work phone. And so I'm, when I'm at the no office, there's a phone right there. So it's not a big deal at all. Yeah. F- for that. And so you just get a notification that someone called. Yeah. Well, uh, man, I feel like this might be. And so a text comes through because so the text gets transferred into, you know, through and becomes Wi-Fi, sends it to your messaging. I can so I can text message on my computer. OK, I can chat Google chat through my computer. The calls is the 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 real time. You can't SMS. I can't. You have that set up too. Yes, you can SMS through your computer. Yeah, I know you can, but you you got that. I set know up. I can because I do. <laughs> well, not to interrupt I you. I feel like this, but is, I am. I feel like this is such bad timing. But I got you a gift. Oh, is it for my? For, did you get me a new phone case? Maybe. It, no, it's it's uh, it's portable. Uh, Clash of Clans. <laughs> That's a terrible it's gift. It's its own device. That's that's half. That's literally half. Maybe three quarters of the reason I'm ditching. I know. I know. The phone <laughs> is. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I I, I heard this thing about like uh, trying to like uh, you know st- start off reevaluate your life every year and maybe purge a little bit that uh, I got too many things jammed into my life. Wow. Like just packed right in there. Well, I didn't want to use that word, but yes. Oh. Just just. Jammed in. Look, look what I figured out. This is high tech. High tech, ladies and gentlemen. Ready? What's going on? Literally packed in there like sardines. A little clip from Alf. Shut up. Right? You have clips going on the actual... That's crazy. If you're oh. just listening today, we have a TV behind us. That's that's wild. And that was a little clip from Alf. Well, we'll just Gordon keep... Shumway. 
Yeah. Using to set set up or to to spike the the ball you were setting up, which is our idiom today, which is packed like sardines. Packed like sardines. So life is too packed, and my phone is a major culprit. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, starting off January by. So did you start untethering. January first? Uh, yeah, I actually started in December yep. and then kicked it into full gear. So this is going to sound like for, you know, it's like a, an alcoholic <laughs> minus the alcohol. It's the drug addict and my drug is, is your called, phone is, is my phone. Yeah. So like I can be having a conversation with you and then just be like, oh, yeah, that's really cool, man. <laughs> and it's it's terrible. It's right. terrible. It's like a, it's the devil. In were my were those the two things like hmm, alcohol or phone? And so, as a result, I've dumped the phone, but now I'm an alcoholic. And so... <laughs> I can just see you over the sink with your phone. <laughs> I don't claim to make great decisions. Do you remember when smartphones were brand new and one of the hottest app was to, to mime that you're drinking? Oh, yeah. And you just see the... How does the screen know? The screen's... A, oh. Uh, absolutely. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, anyways, good for you. Good so, yeah. For you. So, that's. Can I borrow it? your phone while you're not using <laughs> it? Well, so it sits at home. Uh, funny that you say that. In an actual cage. There's an Describe actual, this. like, like uh, plastic barred cage, uh, six sided with a lock, and the keys are in my wife's. Does it does it actually have sort of a cartoony jail cell look to it? It's a jail cell. Okay. I've seen this, but I, I, I've only seen people do it uh, to. To punish their kids. Well, it's it's more like self like flagellation. <laughs> flagellation. <laughs> yeah, so doing it to myself in order to uh, yeah just kind of curb myself. It's crazy because I also run things like if you want to watch a TV program at my house, I don't have stuff everywhere, and right. so I cast stuff from my sure, phone. Sure, and so you can I can touch the phone, but I have to go like through the bars. Yeah. You know, like uh, you look like the penguin from Batman with your fingers kind of all gnarled trying to get into the buttons and all the rest of it. So I can touch the phone, but it's like it's it's useless. You can't you can't type. You can't play games. Right. You can't watch video. Uh, like So it's this instead of self-control. Yeah, I've tried self-control, and that didn't work. Or I guess this is still self-control. It's a different kind of self-control. Yeah. Yeah, and so it, it stays, my phone stays at home. My life is too packed already, and it's just like a little time sap, so. Now, you said it's like self-flatulation? Um, uh, flatu- <laughs> I already do that. Self-flatulating is, uh, well, well, is, is there any other way to flatulate except well, by self? The irony is I was going to compare the two, because I'm like, the first time you said, what's the actual word now I'm blanking out? Flage. Flat is it G? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because because I was like, do these words come from the same origin at all? Is this our next episode? Is self flatulence? <laughs> There's no other way to do it. Uh, I could like cup your armpit and you could squeeze down for some sort of <laughs> co-ed, co-ed flatulating. Uh, or co-ed, right. we're well, still both dudes. So, anyways, it's co. Yeah, two people flatulating one another. <laughs> I can't do that anyway. Whatever. So Whatever. packed in like sardines. Packed, packed like sardines. And so that's what we're going to cover today. And uh, and uh, yeah, that's actually a great example is is your schedule. And I think people are expected to answer like, hey, how, you, how have you been doing? Busy. I don't say that. No, but I think people expect that's the right answer. Yeah, they do. And I don't use that word. What do you say? My schedule is full. <laughs> I have a full schedule. Do you say packed like sardines? Uh, no, I think busy. People just say busy, and it's like busy with. There's always like 30 minutes to do something. Like, and so when I I purposely trying to get together with like lots of people, and so like I don't need your whole day. I just Fair like, enough. hey, what, what's going on? Right. So busy. Is that like the blow off? Like I don't have whatever you're about to ask. Is that like a first layer of defense mechanism? You know, it's funny how culture has changed because that's a. Uh, I have a nice full schedule, but uh, there, I, there's always room. That shouldn't be on that screen. Yeah. Um, but the the what's interesting about it is is it used to be a sign of success when you weren't busy, when you're like I'm on vacation, I'm doing blah 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 blah, and and now a sign of success or the the right answer is saying oh I am I am busy. Yeah, I, I try not to say because when you tell somebody you're busy, it's making I, I don't have time for you. Right. Yeah. And so I'm busy. I'm busy. Oh, see, I don't even hear it that way. It's just like life is busy and 
and and so I, why would I, I interact with you if but you're, I'd like, if to, you're I'd already like to busy? change it like I'm good like yeah relax I'm not doing nothing I sit around most of the time right I just wait for people to call me and me not answer because I don't have a phone see but that comes from a privileged popular person who gets those phone calls yeah the rest of us have to go looking for hangouts with people well I'm, I guess everybody has their burden to bear right <laughs> and uh you know I mine is what it is <laughs> Well, you know, we we could get into origins and and whatever, but since our idiom is uh, packed like sardines, I have right here the classic, no, you unlabeled <laughs> tin can of sardines. Now, I can't eat these. You're not going to try? Well, the last time I had them, they were like dead and covered in oil. They're supposed to be dead. Oh, let's try it then. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I took off the plastic bag part of this. Is because... one of these smoked oysters? Because I love smoked oysters. Do you actually? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the but good not stuff. sardines. Sardines, not so much. I'm not even sure I've tried sardines. One of these is tomato sauce. Oh, and one of these. This is great. Is hot pepper. I, I'm I'm good either way. And I don't know which. Why one don't we just open one so you can savor the other one later? No, we can open both. <laughs> Although the studio is gonna stink <laughs> for the rest of the day. You need a midnight snack. Oh I should, yeah. I should try this with my daughter later to see. She might like you. Let's just. I don't want to spill. Okay, I think I got the tomato sauce one. Oh, right. definitely. Your lid is even stained red. Yeah, but spicy things this. can also be red. So I, I thought I, I was going in to smell the pepper. You smell nothing but fish. That is just... I should have grabbed So I'll tell pork. you, <clears throat> I spent three weeks in the Philippines. and Is this just to uh, distract from No, eating? I spent three weeks in the Philippines at a, a college. And the food literally every day three times a day, was rice and deep-fried star- sardines. No way. I'm not joking. We lost, I don't know, I lost 18 pounds, I think. By not eating it? Yeah, it was. So, one, it was not appealing, which is, is terrible because p- these people were, like, you know, running a schedule, you know, like a tight ship situation, and I'm, right. like, dogging on their food. Oh, oh, that is not good <laughs> for the gear. Good thing I wasn't <laughs> over the computer. Uh, i just slide this away. I was away. trying to show it that packed like sardines it's like they are side by side in there okay well let's do this all right are you gonna i'll go one from here i'm gonna go with a nice fat one oh yeah oh wait a minute oh this one's still alive oh this one's still alive just kidding you just are you gonna eat the whole thing okay (laughs) um not my favorite but possible we're okay. gonna we're gonna need a napkin. You you entertain them, and I'll be right back. back. That corner, go through the studio B. You can probably see the paper towel oh, through yeah, the. You know, as far as what I expected, like I expected to detest it, and the look on my face probably looked <laughs> detested before I had a chance to even try it. And I, you know what, I would eat another one. I'm not going to. But that was not. Even remotely as bad as I expected. I think it's texturally that it's like solid mush, like like it's mush. It is mush. It's just mush. Fish mush. Mm-hmm. Mm. Anyway, I'm choking it down. I don't hate it, but I don't need to get another one. Oh, hey, let's let's get this little spillage sure, over here. Too. This is a all good you. good uh, so, <clears throat> material for a. Uh, Podcast. When is, can oh. you think of a time, and Village Intimate Children, perhaps you can think the same. When is a time that you have been packed in like a sardine? Yeah. Well, there's a couple of quick go to. I used to Sky Train, which is our version. Oh, of, humble uh, brag. <laughs> <laughs> Not to brag, but I used to Sky Train every day to work. <laughs> okay. um, and uh, some of my coworkers affectionately called it the peasant wagon. And uh, oh, nice! Yeah, get close up of that. Close up of the sardine teeth. That's awful. <laughs> Continue. Um, and so there was random, not random. There was very, very. It doesn't matter. I've got the same breath as you. Um, it's got. It, there were certain times. So, and you could literally change it. You could alter the sardine effect by ten minutes if you just like. I'm not going to leave right after work. I'm going to wait fifteen minutes. And the difference on so SkyTrain is our version of like a subway or or a mm-hmm. train monorail whatever you have ALRT 
advanced in, in, your own, in your own city. <clears throat> oh, now I'm burping sardine. <laughs> I'm still chewing the mush. It's like someone took a dookie into my mouth. It's not good. Covered in tomato sauce and fish paste. Fish mush. <laughs> okay. So, so Skytrain, for sure, there were times where you are body to body, like, not COVID friendly. Like, you, you <laughs> can feel other strangers' heartbeats or worse. Mm-hmm. So you that, come out with other people's sweat on your and body. And then there was, <laughs> then there was, you know, touring days where you know different vehicles. Sometimes it was four of us. Sometimes it was twelve of us. Mm-hmm. And you were just crammed into a hotel room or crammed into, you know, a, an RV or a touring bus where there's not enough bunks. Like you're you're crammed in there. And so those those are the two that come to mind of just being. There's of course concerts and like where you're like. Rushing the stage and you're surrounded by people, that kind of stuff. But <laughs> we're so we're so old though. So like <clears throat> mosh pits. Did you have mosh pits at your concert? Like when I was performing? Uh huh. No. <laughs> I mean, we didn't have the style of music. It did happen. The, 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 there were mosh pits once in a while, but it was like, what are you guys doing? Like, okay, we're so, an acapella boy band <laughs> in the in the era of of like jazz music mosh pit, jazz music mosh pit, a cluster funk. <laughs> cool bad cool oh my goodness <laughs> cluster funk mm. ah well get that out yikes how about you any uh packed like sardines experiences in the your most life? packed together type of experience have been music festivals right um where i was going to see people like you um and it's just a sea of people yeah, and, and you're literally, like, body to body, and people, like, I don't know, we just didn't think about, like, yeah, having festivals people. more than a concert. Like, if you go to U2 in, a, in an arena, at least you have your seat. This is You my have your seat. seat. People are not, like, touching you. But a music festival, you're, like, bumping up against people, and their yeah. sweat is on you. And Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I guess a six-foot rule doesn't quite work well in a music <laughs> festival <laughs> situation. Like, worst mosh pits ever. I think COVID six, mosh pit. <laughs> I think six feet of you are touching me. <laughs> <laughs> well, should we get into it? Sorry, to, uh, the other one would would, oh. would be uh, we were on an airplane. Uh, my wife oh, and I planes, yeah, on the airplane, we're literally in a tin can. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that's hilarious. You're in a tin can jammed together, and there was a gentleman behind us, and he was a like a double seat gentleman. He was he was an enormous was he a double man. seat gentleman in a double seat, or yes, was he in no, one? no, no, no. He was a double okay. seat gentleman in a. Like he's a big big boy. Anywho, the interesting part double was, seat cup was that he, uh, as he filled his seats and uh, he fell asleep and was leaning forward. Deb and I were like laughing because he was leaned up and kind of like closer to the seat crack. <laughs> and we it was just it caught us funny till till we got the giggles. Like, of how like this stuff doesn't happen. It's like a TV episode, yeah. And so that jammed in like sardines. I think of an airplane or music festival. Yeah. So fair enough. There but you go. anyways, well, that's enough uh, random nonsense. We should uh, probably actually find out where the real idiom comes from. I'm not sure why it's taken over the TV, but here we go. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? No one can know. I turned around and looked behind. Those words came from another mind. We'll have our producer or us get that sorted out. It will be better for the next episode. Yeah, there you go. It's fine. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, so, uh, Origins, the dirty and the nerdy mm-hmm. of said uh, idiom, packed like sardines, uh, was more interesting than I expected it to be. Because I thought it was going to be, hey, ever seen a <laughs> tin can of sardines? That's well, t- where it came tin from. Tin cans are quite like an old thing. It's not like it's like a, right. a, a new invention. So, right. So, uh, I'm like, oh, Packed like sardines comes from being packed like sardines. Yeah. So first of all, let's let's go with just the word "packed" because uh, there were several sites that said that the word "packed" to meaning like you go into a restaurant and you're like, "Ah, oh, it's packed in here." It's packed. That just that word was a singularity use of the first word of this whole idiom, which is not true. Hmm. So saying a room is packed or a building is packed predates this idiom because "packed" still means packed. Like you pack your luggage. You. He's packing. Yeah. And so to he say has a gun. to say a room is packed is a is a figurative 
word meaning picture luggage, picture a suitcase, picture your closet. There's too many people that it's not just people in here. They packed people in here. Mm-hmm. And they Tetris people in here. So to be packed like sardi- sardines, of course, alludes to the actual way, like like we looked in our tin can here, that sardines are packed together. Uh, and and you look at them and they're like, they're even alternating. Like, because there's a fat end of the fish to a little end. Yep. They're like, uh-huh. they're, they're fitting in there side by side. And Tetris. Tetris in there. They're sardined in there. Uh, so it's very easy and a very quick step to refer to a full room as packed like sardines. Or uh, this was another example and maybe an old world version of this where families often shared a bed. Um, hmm. and you picture like five, six kids in one bed. <laughs> it's like the grandparents feet at from both ends. Charlie and the Chocolate yeah, Factory. Feet at both ends. They were packed in there like sardines because okay. it, it actually kind of looks like that. Mm-hmm. Like, look at the way they're laying in this bed. Look at the way they're sleeping in this room. So what was surprising to me is that I've never heard this. There's another idiom uh, whose origins I couldn't actually nail down because I got, oh, it's Russian. Oh, it's Dutch or or whatever. And the one I'm going to share you uh, share with you is actually an English uh, script translated from Italian. Okay, but the idiom is packed uh, like a pasta. the The idiom is packed like herrings in a barrel. Oh, okay. So almost exactly the same idiom, like herrings in a barrel, like her- packed like, like herrings in a barrel. Herrings in a barrel. And so uh, this is from a collection of voyages and travels. Some now first printed from the original manuscript by On Sham Churchill. I'm assuming this is not the Italian author. These are the translators. And John Churchill uh, is 1704. Uh, now, I must say for my particular sardine, it did not taste fishy. It was more a textural issue for me. It smelled fishy. But I didn't like... But, oh, what you disliked about it? It te- was texture. But as far as like, I think herring in a barrel, um, like out to sea herring in a barrel, guys crack open a new herring barrel. That's not going to be smelling good. This no, is my my off the cuff response. No, that's exactly right. Okay, so what happened? <laughs> Not to interrupt you, but, but but here we go. So first of all, sardines are thought to have been named after the island of Sardinia. Sardinia. Did you know that? Yes, you knew that. I know the phrase Sardinia. I could have made that up. That's a phrase, like uh, the island Sardinia. Okay, you know it's a, f- a common Italian phrase. Sardinia. Where I, the I, pilchards were once found in abundance. Uh, in abundance. Did you know that a sardine is a half grown pilchard? No. Have you ever heard the word pilchard? No. Isn't that the name of a dog in a cartoon? Pilchard? Yeah. <laughs> I think you're, you're thinking of Clifford. Oh, pilchard, the big red dog. <laughs> okay, continue. <laughs> like shooting pilchards in a barrel. Uh, all right. So that's they're named after the island. They're in abundance. They're a huge part of the food group like globally. Hmm. In, in the hierarchy of the cycle of life, sardines play an important role. Uh, so the the, the uh, excerpt I was going to read, on Sham and John Churchill from 1704, the ship I went aboard of when it was ready to fail, sail, sorry, uh, hopefully not fail, that's a different ship, uh, was loaded with elephants, teeth, elephants, teeth, and slaves. To the number of 680 men and women and children, it was a pitiful sight to behold how all, oh, by the way, we're going to get to this in more detail, but some of the oli- oliest, oldest uh, in print usage of uh, packed like sardines or packed like herrings in a barrel, unfortunately, refer to slave trading. Interesting. Yeah. So it that sounded really, more exciting than I meant it, but that is interesting. <laughs> yeah. No. It's it's sad, but huh. almost to the point of should we be using this because it became so are we canceling often, this phrase right now? <laughs> it became so <laughs> often used when. Ref- but the good news is, is every uh, quote I found was criticizing. The slave trade, or at least the transport of them. The women were between the decks and those that were with child in the great cabin, the children in the steering. Uh, I don't know that word. Oh, pressed. Pressed together like herrings in a barrel. And I say I don't know the word because it's like weird. Look at that. That S. I can't see that far. Oh, it's old English writing. I'm not, this is not modern text I'm reading. To, like herrings is, in a barrel, which caused an intolerable to heat to and stench. To the the captain had made me a bed upon the quarter deck with mats to keep me from the rain and dew. So, yeah, this this oldest quote that I found, translated from Italian, uh, literally is talking about the 
Slave trade, unfortunately. So since the 1900s, um, in, in, let's talk modern use for a, for a minute. In the at least since the 1900s, passengers on like I, I talked about the Sky Train, but New York City's trains have been described as packed like sardines. Sardines are packed in cans, little space between them, exactly like that. The phrase "packed like herrings in a barrel," barrel although goes back to like 1600s, 1700s. So it could be just the evolution of fish packing that has changed. Mm-hmm. Uh, this saying because it's definitely herrings is barely used in modern English even in other parts of the world whereas packed like sardines is used often in in, uh, I wonder in if, English if, speaking languages if, if I wonder if pickled herrings say to one another you drink like a fish <laughs> just, just, just jumped into my head <laughs> so let's give you another one I, I I already prefaced this with saying, unfortunately, this comes from a lot of trade, uh, slave trade related things. 1760, seven or eight hundred men and women promiscuously squeezed like herrings or mackerel oh into one ship where they can lie on only one side upon the bare boards and often forced to lie double during the whole voyage with no other food than horse beans and water stifled up for want of air and with their own stench. Uh, and it, it just it gets worse. Remarks on the slave trade, June 1789. Here is presented to our view one of the most horrid spectacles. A number of creatures parked side by side, almost like herrings in a barrel, and reduced nearly to the state of being buried alive, with just air enough to preserve a degree of life sufficient to make them sensible of all the horror of their situation. So, that's ter- that's unfortunately, terrible. this terrible. idiom being used figuratively uh, has at least not all of its roots. But a root, no pun intended to the movie series Roots, <laughs> but in slave trade. And it wasn't even meant to be funny. But <laughs> um, so that's the sad part of this. Uh, but obviously, I mean, this was news to me in researching this. Because I've, never, I've no, only I feel pictured smarter. subway cars and I feel and smarter and somehow dirtier. Right. For right. knowing. Pack like sardines. I'll never be able to think of this phrase again. Right. Without like. It's a hard one. Feeling like I've got to tell somebody a whole story. All right. Well, let's lighten the mood. Sure. Uh, and talk about why do we, why, why do sard, why sardines are canned? Why do we have canned fishes? Well, how else would you make them taste like little piles of mush? <laughs> well, I can answer this question because in the <laughs> oh, late 1700s, the French government was in need of a solution to their dried and smoked foods spoiling too quickly, uh, ultimately causing uh, deficiency diseases in the country. And it was a time of war, a time of military needs, uh, nutritional needs. So the French government offered a prize uh, of 12,000 francs to anyone who would create a better uh, food preservation method. That's a lot of hot dogs. <laughs> 12,000 francs. <laughs> No, this is we're still talking about the trains. Oh, this, was, this was 12,000 guys named Frank. I see you over there. I give you 12,000 francs. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Uh, of all I'm funny, Francis, <laughs> I'm not a Frank. Get me out of here. So here comes Nicola Appert, Nicola Appert, uh, who is now known as ready for this, the father of canning. Wow. Mm hmm. Uh, he was a professional cook who moved from Champagne to Paris to open a confectionery shop where he was conserving candies and sweets, which became his passion. So a pair uh, found modern day ways to preserve syrups, jams, juices, dairy products, soups, vegetables, all without spoiling flavor or texture. I don't know. Maybe this is just how the texture of sardines are, even if they weren't canned. So you don't the- need teeth to eat what I just ate. So with the stipulation that he would share his methods, the French government rewarded him with the prize money in 1810. And the rest is history. Money in the Bank, the world's first cookbook, uh, came out regarding preservation methods. Uh, And then uh, from France to Spain, then the New World, uh, the market for canned sardines. So when sardines came along, the first year of canning sardines, it was an instant hit. 30,000 cans of sardines were made in Brittany. Uh, throughout uh, from Brittany throughout France. Uh, fast forward to 1880, which is only what 30, 40 years from where we started. 50 million tins were produced wow. from that same location. Of all irony, I'm not sure if you remember this. You and I toured a canning factory. We did. I forgot about that. <laughs> wow, the Georgia Georgia canning yeah, factory. That's right. For a three minutes gone, right? <laughs> yes, we did. We did a tour. Oh, uh, we should put a link in the in the. <laughs> we'll see if I can dig it up. Yeah, our, our canning, that was the That's day we right. went. 
we went sailing. Ridiculous. We did the 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 pirate ship boat out, out of Gary Point. Sailing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sky sailing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So a little That's fun side stuff. sardine canning history uh, as a bonus. I actually feel smarter. And so, you? yeah, you nailed it this 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 week. Oh, I'm glad. Some juicy tidbit inside of an idiom. I am juicy tidbit wrapped in an idiom. Well, as opposed to like sealed yep, in. There's a tin nothing can. inside this idiom. <laughs> That's true. Okay, that happens. That does happen. This one is like those ones, like the little nugget, except it's a sad nugget. It's a fish nugget. Yeah. Well, yeah, some sort of nugget. It's it's not good. It's a fish nugget in a tin can, soaking in oil and hot tomato peppers. tomato sauce. <laughs> Yummy. You should try the hot pepper one. Oh, yes. Mm, please. Get that combo <laughs> mixed in I your wouldn't teeth. Want, I'll, I'll let Al try them first. Who? Oh, yeah. I thought you said Al. Who? Is this thing on? <laughs> well, we should wrap up today with... Uh, Riddling is a game we like to play. Some riddling. It's, it's a two-part... I hate to cut you off. Trivia-based question and uh, demand but, a two-part overlapping answer, overlapping by sound, syllable, word, or words. So, for example, let me give you an example. Do you mind if I give you an example? Please. Last week, uh, uh, we left you with the idiom uh, off on the wrong foot, getting started off on the wrong foot. And uh, we left you with this riddling puzzle. What rocket-related word follows three, two, one... And has a horrible start. It's got to be blast off on the wrong foot. Blast off on the wrong foot. And that's how you play riddling. You got blast off. You got off on the wrong foot. I see how it's done. That's how you play. Well, I've got two prepared. I got two. Well, let me go first here. See if... uh, Hit me. You can beat the illegitimate children out there as they drive to work and or treadmill. It's called slam dancing in this Atari side-scrolling jungle game. Oh, this is great. I know it. Say it again. It's called slam dancing in this Atari scroll side scrolling jungle game. I'm gonna go with Mosh Pitfall. <laughs> Mosh Pitfall. I love Pitfall. Is <laughs> yeah. that Atari or in television? It was Atari, I checked. It was Activision. Activision. Yeah. Oh, but that's still considered Atari? It was out on the Atari, yeah. Okay, got it. I, I actually made sure to check. It may have been on other platforms. Apparently they re released it in like the two thousands on Android. Wow. Yeah. Is it the exact same game? I don't know. Oh. Okay, I got one for you. I don't have a phone. Fair enough. I can't you know can't, anything can't anymore. Play it anyway. I'm left with just what's in my head. All right, how about this one? Crammed into a small fishy space went up the water spout. Okay, <laughs> one more time. Crammed into a small fishy space went up the water spout. Packed like sardine seaweed sea spider. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> that is wow. If you are an ESL person trying to figure out what idioms mean, I apologize for that last one. That will be tricky for you. Okay, well, I got another one. I got another another one. one. I'll keep it rolling here. This jammed full idiom is an academic honors from the principal. This jammed full idiom is an academic honors from the principal. I got it. I got it. Is it... uh, Packed like sardines list. Yes, it is. Packed like sardines list. That's great. That's a good one. Yeah, you're killing them today. Villegitimate children, if you want to kill this next one, reach out to us and tell us what you think it might be uh, on Instagram at the dot village dot idiom or email the village idiom podcast at gmail.com or whether it's the Facebook, the YouTubes, the Twitters at three minutes gone. Beauty. I think you'll like this one. You ready? Yep. This guy packed his sack to deliver all the toys, but was afraid to be in tight spaces. This guy packed his sack to deliver all the toys, but was afraid to be in tight spaces. That is amazing, and that is three minutes gone. That's a really good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. That's that's great. It's so good, I just want to say the answer, but it's not. I won't. won't. We we had a lot uh, to fit into this episode. That's good. There's a lot of things happening. We packed it in like sardines. Very nice. It's clever. This, This... you know, we we should know. we should have sat closer. <laughs> I know for this whole episode. Yeah, whatever. Brought the camera way in, so we looked like we're packed. We should have had four guests. <laughs> just jammed just heads. We're thinking of all these good ideas after we're wrapping up the episode. That sounds like us. All right. Well, it's been fun putting together. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Skinny. I am Jurassic Mark. And these are the village idioms. And. Exciting, exciting, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> That's three minutes gone. <laughs> <laughs>